First on our list of heavy weapons is going to be machine guns. Uh, machine guns, there's around 20 of them in Destiny right now that are non-sunset and legendary. And so let's go over all of them, let's tier them up for endgame content. Machine guns are actually very straightforward uh, because they have pretty much one purpose. Everyone understands what a machine gun is for. You know, rockets might have multiple purposes, swords might have multiple purposes, but a machine gun is very uh, tried and true. It's basically designed for precise, ranged, ammo efficient, ad clear, maybe some utility sprinkled in on the side, but everyone understands what a machine gun is designed for first and foremost. So with that out of the way, let's talk about scoring. Uh, I've broken down scoring into archetype and perks. Uh, I haven't really considered affinity because machine guns are largely separated from affinity outside of stuff like Empyrean extension. But I decided, you know, I feel like that would be a little bit unfair um, kind of compared to something like surge matching where, you know, no matter what class you're on, no matter what subclass you're on, you'd want to surge match for DPS with something like Apex. Whereas, you know, machine guns, you know, you can use really, if there was a machine gun that was like really, really good, but had like a stasis affinity, people would still use it. Just like how commemoration is void and, you know, people still use it, uh, just generally speaking, because it's a very good machine gun. So, um, you know, affinity is kind of separated. We didn't really score it here. We only scored archetype and perks. So you might be wondering about archetype. Machine guns have three archetypes. We have adaptives, we have high impacts, and we have rapids. Um, adaptives, in my opinion, tend to be the most appropriate for most scenarios. Now, before we get started, there is a misconception that I used to have about machine guns, and that is that rapid fires have very poor range, and so they did, you know, decent, you know, damage, but they're very shaky and a very poor range and very hard to control. Um, now, some of that is true. Rapids are harder to control and have a lot more recoil than the other uh, machine gun types, especially adaptives, but they actually have very, very similar range compared to high impacts and adaptives. So I was pleasantly surprised in that regard. Now, rapids do have substantially higher dps than the other two machine gun archetypes they do have relatively lower total damage so i thought that i think you know rapids given their high dps um not that you know their dps matters for boss damage or anything but they're faster at killing ads nonetheless so i think rapids we're going to give them one point adaptives we're going to give them one point and i think high impacts given their general baseline stats um given their you know they're really unnecessary extra total damage especially given that most of them don't have um ammo regen or reserve increasing perks for the most part that are really substantial like four times a charm um i would say you know adaptives and rapids are really the way to go for most cases and high impacts we're going to be giving them zero points instead of one okay uh next up we have perks so perks are extremely important on machine guns extremely 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 important um, I've split perks into three categories. We have ammo, utility, and damage, okay? So for our ammo perks, I'm talking stuff like field prep, uh, I'm talking stuff like triple tap, envious assassin, rewind rounds, uh, subsistence, auto loading holster, four times a charm, and reconstruction. I decided to give field prep, triple tap, and envious a score of one. Uh, rewind rounds, subsistence, auto loading holster, four times a charm, uh, a score of two, and reconstruction, a score of three. Now you might be wondering, you know, why isn't four times a charm higher? Why isn't triple tap higher? Why isn't field prep higher? Um, you know, increasing the amount of total effective ammo that a machine gun has is certainly useful, but machine guns these days, especially after their buffs, have so much total damage and so much, you know, total ammo that generally speaking, you don't tend to run out of ammo if you're using a machine gun correctly and very precisely. So um, with that being said, a, a perk like reconstruction, which is like really, really high QOL, is really, really uh, a lot more helpful than something like I would say, you know, triple tap or envious assassin or even field prep, right? Anytime you're manually reloading a machine gun, uh, machine guns, much like glaives, have very, very slow base reload animations just by nature. So really, you want to be just focusing on those QOL perks uh, and, you know, stuff like four times a charm still pulls through a lot of the time. But, you know, reconstruction is definitely uh, I think most people would agree by far the best machine gun perk for ammo related um, needs. OK, so moving on, we have utility perks. Um, machine guns have plenty of utility perks. We got Wellspring, Hatchling, Headstone, Volt Shot, Pugilist, uh, Demo, Repulsor Brace, Dragonfly, Firefly, Destabilizing Rounds, all that sort of stuff. Um, so what I decided to do is I, you know, categorize them into points. I put Wellspring, Hatchling, Headstone, Volt Shot, and Pugilist in one point. Uh, a lot of those perks have some level of compromise. For example, Pugilist doesn't act like a simulated reload like Demo does, which is really important for a machine gun. Volt Shot requires a manual reload, which is really, really suboptimal for a machine gun like we mentioned. Hatchling lacks potency. 
Uh, Headstone really only synergizes with Stasis for the most part, and Wellspring is pretty weak compared to Demo, given that it splits a similar amount of ability energy, but just across all three of your abilities instead of maybe your most important one. Um, Repulsor, Dragonfly, Firefly, Destabilizing, I gave those two. Demo and Incandescent, I gave those three. Uh, in my opinion, Incandescent is easily the strongest of the subclass, like 3.0 verb uh, splash perks that you can get on a machine gun, especially given that it procs stuff like Singeing, so it's really, really good for that. Um, and then Demo, of course, Demo, I feel like everyone understands why Demo is good on a machine gun. Reloads the thing, um, has synergy because you can kill adds with your machine gun and get grenade energy and then throw a grenade and then reload your machine gun, you know, very popular on machine guns like Corrective Measure. So those got three points. However, I did subtract one point from Demo. I gave it two points if Demo is in the fourth column. So if Demo is in the fourth column and as a result, it's taking the place of a, a like a, a damage perk or like, you know, another utility perk, then it's obviously a little bit less useful. If you have something like Auto Demo instead of like Demo Firefly or Demo Dragonfly or Demo One for All or something like that, then obviously Demo would, um, you know, would have to be docked by a point. So that's utility, and finally we have damage. Okay, so damage, um, a lot of the perks that are typically considered to be not very good on stuff like rockets or even stuff like primaries are actually pretty good on machine guns. So for example, one for all is a perk that I typically don't recommend on most weapon types, uh, including trace rifles, which are high fiery, because typically speaking, that's not really the proper way to use those weapons. But machine guns, you're really going to be kind of shooting a bunch of ads in a row um, and killing them with relative, you know, speed, right? A trace rifle, if you have something like one for all, you either have to tap three ads in a GM or you have to mow down three ads in a row, which takes a lot of trace ammo. Machine guns, on the other hand, can have no trouble, you know, proccing one for all whatsoever. So I'm inclined to give them, you know, more points than just one. So uh, the way I kind of categorize machine gun damage perks, um, base perks are a one, right? Um, Adrenaline junkie, one for all, cascade point, tricorn, and sword logic, I gave two. Uh, Sword Logic, we decided that it wasn't as good as uh, Killing Tally because it requires you, it has a timer. Now you can swap off it, which is a small benefit, but it has a timer. And in order to surpass uh, Killing Tally, which is less restrictive, it needs you to kill a boss. And you're not going to kill a boss with a machine gun and still be shooting it afterward, most likely. So, you know, Sword Logic is cool. Uh, it's kind of like Killing Tally. It's mo mostly going to play out very similarly to Killing Tally, um, but it's, you know, it's not as, as versatile and as like very straightforward to use. And then Killing Tally, I think, you know, no surprise, this is a three point perk because it scales up to essentially like rampage levels of damage, but it lasts until you stow or reload your weapon, which if you have a weapon that has a perk like Reconstruction, then you're pretty much never reloading it. So very, very strong. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, everything else that is a perk on the machine guns, again, those are base perks, and we gave them one point. Okay, so uh, I hope that answers all of your questions for how we're going to score these weapons. So let's get to actually scoring them and placing them in our wonderful tier list. So first up, we have a fine memorial. This is the Moon machine gun, and this is going to be an arc adaptive frame. Now let's take a look at this thing's perks. So this thing has auto-loading. Uh, it has Clown, which I didn't even give points for uh, on machine guns. I don't think it's very good. It has Subsistence, which is pretty decent. And it has Field Prep. So that's not bad, right? Pretty good first column. And then it has Demo, unfortunately, in the second column as its utility perk. And then Adrenaline Junkie, which is pretty good. Again, pretty good. Um, it has Frenzy. And it has, uh, it has One for All. It has One for All, right? So it's, it's pretty decent. It's not that bad. Um, if it had Demo and Adrenaline Junkie, so if Demo got shifted into the first column, this would actually be a very, very good machine gun. So yeah, not bad at all. Uh, I think we ended up placing this thing in the B tier, in the B tier. So yeah, this thing's coming in at eight points and in the B tier, pretty solid overall. Um, good archetype, um, has mostly good perks. And um, yeah, it only really suffers from having Demo in the last column instead of in the, in the third column. Okay. Let's go on to Archon's Thunder. Now this thing is clearly designed for PvP. This is an Iron Banner drop. It's a solar high impact. And man, I mean, if you look at these perks, you've got almost nothing for, for PvE. I mean, you have Rampage, which is like, not great, right? It's okay on machine guns. It's, it's pretty bad on most other weapons, but on machine guns, it's actually acceptable. And then you have Field Prep and Auto. But again, this thing's archetype is not wonderful. If you want a solar high impact, fixed odds is a lot better. Um, and this thing has, you know, nothing really noteworthy when it comes to, you know, PvE prowess. So we're going to go ahead and put this thing in the D tier at four points. Okay, 
what do we have next? We have Avalanche. So speaking of solar machine guns, Avalanche is a dawning adaptive frame machine gun. Um, and this thing has, the second version of it at least, from uh, this year, is pretty good, right? This thing has auto, it has subsistence, uh, and then it has it has Swash, which is okay. It has Adrenaline Junkie. It has Incandescent, which is excellent, even if it's not enhanced. Uh, and it has Target Lock, Vorpal, and Cascade. So it has a couple interesting perks. Um, I'm personally a fan of Auto Cascade uh, in some rare instances. Like, for example, if you're using Div or you have, like, Forbearance on or something like that, you have special weapons that are capable of getting a decent, uh, you know, amount of kill-up time. If you switch to this gun, uh, remember, Cascade Point... Um, yeah, Cascade Point, let's actually, let me take a look at this. Cascade Point is, okay, firing delay is reduced by, what is it, 30% on machine guns? So, if we just go and do 1 divided by 0 0.7, that's basically a 43% damage perk for a pretty short time. It's like 2.5 seconds, but that's enough to like burst down a major or burst down some ads near you. So, I think Cascade Point is actually kind of underrated on machine guns. People haven't really talked about it much yet. And if you have something like auto loading or reconstruction with Cascade Point, it can definitely be useful, um, especially if you're like a div user and you're, you know, you're hitting precision shots all the time because you're on div. Um, it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely worth kind of thinking about. Uh, very niche for sure, but I gave it, you know, separate point kind of extra extra points as a separate category of a perk compared to something like Vorpal. Um, yeah, so that being said, um, this thing's pretty good. Incandescent is great. Auto is great. Sub is great. Yeah, just a great overall machine gun. We're going to put this thing solidly in the A tier. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's not craftable, but it's it's got all the makings of a good machine gun. It's only missing an ammo regen perk. So yeah, solid in the A tier. That's uh, 10 points. All right, next up we have Chain of Command. Chain of Command is a stasis adaptive. It's a pursuit slash ritual weapon from a couple seasons ago. And yeah, this thing has, it's kind of interesting because it has demo in the last column, but I didn't penalize it because it has actually demo and ad junkie. And normally you're going to see ad junkie in the fourth column, but for whatever reason, Bungie decided to get extra quirky with this gun and they switched the positions of the utility and uh, damage perk. And I think that's acceptable. So I didn't dock it for any points. Um, some people are using this thing with like osmosis demo for some reason um, to like, turn it into a solar machine gun or something for like Empyrean. I think that's a little silly. Um, just use a solar machine gun if you if you care that much about it. Uh, but again, you know, demo ad junkie, pretty solid. Um, this thing is, yeah, it's just it's just pretty good overall. Um, I, yeah, I don't have too many complaints. If you're a new player and you're just looking for a decent machine gun, this is a pretty solid machine gun. Yeah, it's an adaptive frame, demo AJ, solid roll. So we're going to go ahead and put this thing um, in the, I think in the C tier. Yeah, I think in the top of C tier. Um, oh, hold on a second. Oh, my sheet said this thing is a rapid fire, but this thing is not a rapid fire, but it's whatever. It's not a big deal. The point, the point value is still the same. So yeah, this thing is, uh, if you're like looking to start out and you just want a decent machine gun, this thing is definitely like, yeah, it's definitely usable. Okay. So that's six points for our chain of command. Let's move to circular logic. All right. So circular logic, this thing is an adaptive strand, uh, machine gun from Neomuna. And, uh, this thing's definitely got some interesting perks on it. Um, it has Envious Assassin in the first column, which is pretty rare on a machine gun. Um, now I gotta say Envious Assassin is a little bit weird on a machine gun because running a machine gun implies that you're probably going to be using it for ad clear rather than using your other weapons. But that being said, it's not horrible. It's certainly not horrible. And with the new buffs to Envious Assassin, you're very, very free and, you know, flexible and getting the kills kind of whenever you want. And, uh, it, it should load your machine gun. So if you're using any competent ad clear weapons at all in your other two slots, you know, Envious Assassin will get some use. Unfortunately, everything else here is pretty bad, right? I mean, you have like a manual reload perk and then pulse, which is like, you know, very situational. And then everything else is kind of like, what, like PvP? So yeah, besides that, I mean, you have demo in the fourth column, which again, not great. Um, you have hatchling, right? You have target lock. Tricorn, I think is underrated on machine guns, but as a reminder, this is a strand machine gun, right? So you're either going to be getting like a, like a strand melee kill, which I guess is okay. Uh, but again, you know, yeah, usually with tricorns, you're going to be wanting using, you're going to be wanting to use grenades uh, because they're a more of a safe option, and machine guns are, you know, inherently a, a ranged option uh, as opposed to a, a close range option. Um, so yeah, yeah, someone, someone in chat saying like threadling grenade kills count, but yeah, obviously threadlings are much weaker grenades compared to other uh, machine gun affinities that have tricorn attached to them. Um, so yeah, that being said, this thing is all right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the B tier. It's a, it's a decent option. It's got eight points. And so we're going to leave it in the decent overall tier. Uh, okay, let's move on. We have commemoration next. Yeah, this one is, um, 
This one, probably a lot of people are excited to see where this goes. Or, I mean, I think everyone knows where this one's going to go. This one is a Deep Stone Crypt craftable void adaptive frame machine gun. Extremely stacked perk pool, right? Uh, this thing has four times a charm. It has reconstruction. So it has like the two best perks that you could possibly ask for in the first column. It already has a good archetype. Uh, it's craftable, which is just a bonus. And Bray Inheritance is a nice origin trait. So that's also excellent as well. Uh, everything else here, I think is pretty much irrelevant. Uh, I don't think subsistence is ever going to be used over reconstruction or fourth times. They're kind of like very similar in how they work. Uh, and the other the other perks are like pretty much useless, like well-rounded, uh, adaptive. Um, people kind of, you know, bemoan the lack of dragonfly in the fourth column. I think dragonfly in the first column is a little bit interesting uh, because you get a splash perk and then possibly, you know, um, a perk that does just raw damage to your bullets. Uh, but yeah, mostly you're just looking at reconstruction and four times a charm, which are both excellent, excellent perks. Uh, and then you have Repulsor Brace, right, for Void Builds. Uh, you have Rampage, which again is not bad. You have Firing Line, which I think is not great on a machine gun, but I guess it's worth mentioning. And then you have Killing Tally, and Killing Tally is excellent, right? Everyone knows Killing Tally is likely the best overall machine gun perk. So I think it's no surprise to anyone. Uh, this thing is going solidly in the S tier at 13 points. Very, very solid. Uh, most people perceive this to be the best overall LMG. I would be probably remiss to agree. Um, yeah, this, uh, sorry, to disagree. Remiss to disagree. Uh, yeah, this thing is just extremely high QOL because of reconstruction. Killing Tally works in pretty much every scenario, every situation, no matter what build you're using. This thing is going to perform quite consistently. So Commemoration, I'd say, is the best overall machine gun. Maybe not best utility, but certainly um, the best overall machine gun in Destiny 2 at the current moment. All right, let's move on to Corrective Measure. Now, Corrective Measure is also a 450 RPM adaptive frame uh, void machine gun. So this thing competes with Corrective Measure, sorry, with Commemoration, and uh, a lot of people have compared the two. Um, the only difference, the main difference I would say, is instead of something like Reconstruction and how Commemoration used to have Dragonfly, this thing has Demo and Firefly. So um, Demo Firefly, Demo Adjunkie, if you're looking for a grenade focus build, uh, this is probably going to do you better than Commemoration. Uh, now, Commemoration is definitely more generally applicable than this machine gun, but if you are, get, again, if you're doing a grenade build, uh, especially a void grenade build, um, this is a very, very, very solid option. So, uh, corrective measure, you know, very, very solid, has a lot of great perks. Demo, sub, rewind, you know, AJ, one for all, Firefly, that's a solid 2x3 right there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing at the top of A tier, right next to Avalanche. These things are both very solid, uh, both, very, yeah, both top tier uh, machine guns. All right, let's keep going. We have Eliatic Principle next. Eliatic Principle is from this season, Season of the Witch. Uh, it is a rapid fire arc machine gun. It's craftable. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this thing, yeah, um, this thing, this thing pretty bad. This thing's pretty bad. I mean, if you look at the first column, right, there's pretty much nothing that would be appropriate for PVE uh, end game wise, right? I mean, you have Zen Moment, PvP. That's PvE, but you know, you're manually reloading. PvP, PvP, sort of both, but not great. Uh, PvP, and then PvE, but Eddie Current kind of sucks, right? And then if you're looking at the second column, there's some damage perks that are probably PvE appropriate, like Adrenaline Junkie, Golden Tricorn, and Target Lock, but you are missing the QOL perks in the first column that are essentially required to make a machine gun good in endgame content, right? Machine guns are about feeling snappy, feeling responsive, uh, not having to sit around manually reloading while you're walking, and having good damage uptime, and having good, you know, maybe splash utility if that's what you want out of them. This thing has kind of half of one of those requirements. So I think it's no surprise we're going to put this thing solidly in the D tier. Underneath Archon's Thunder, this thing got uh, three points, I believe. Okay, next up we have Fixed Odds. Now, Fixed Odds, this thing got a lot of hype. This thing got a lot of hype. Uh, when Duality first released, it's a craftable solar high impact uh, machine gun. Uh, this thing had, you know, enhanced incandescent. It had field prep. And a lot of people were a big fan of this thing. Uh, I am personally... Uh, this thing's kind of overrated. It's kind of overrated. First of all, it's a high impact machine gun, which is, you know, the, I would say the worst archetype. Um, it has no reload assist perk, uh, as in like, you have to manually reload this gun by crouching using field prep, which is not great. And then um, in terms of perk diversity, I mean, it has killing tally and it has incandescent, which are both great perks, but there's just better, there's better solar machine guns. Uh, there's better non-solar machine guns um, that are not high impact, that have better perks than field prep. 
so yeah i really you know this thing's all right but if you want again enhanced incandescent is not super super important anymore after the ashes nerf um you can't double kill ignite anymore so you know it's not the biggest deal in the world if you use something like avalanche instead avalanche is a better archetype it has something like subsistence instead it has auto loading so i would probably prefer to have avalanche over a weapon like this uh so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and put fixed odds in the b tier in the b tier um yeah Right there, Fixed Odds got uh, itself a score of 7 points. Alright, next up we have Plank's Stride. Plank's Stride, ooh yeah, this thing is this thing is one one ugly, ugly machine gun. I mean, look at that. It's got some sort of like fallen, spiky design. Anyways, this thing is an arc rapid fire machine gun. Um, I'm really surprised they didn't give it Volt Shot, given that this was, yeah, this came out the season Arc 3.0 did, I think, Plunder. And they didn't give it Volt Shot, despite it being an arc weapon, which is a, a bit weird. But um, regardless, that aside, if we look at this thing's perks, it is kind of a no-brainer how bad this thing is. I mean, Grave Robber is not really a machine gun relevant reload perk. Uh, Mulligan is bad. I mean, Mulligan, the only time Mulligan was ever used on this thing was to transfer it to other weapons during the crafting. And uh, everything else here is like, no, 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 maybe, no, eh, eh, right? This thing is like, what, like a melee build machine gun? There's better melee build machine guns out there. Uh, you can do better. That's my point. And um, yeah, there's not much else I have to say about this. I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the D tier next to Eliatic Principle. Probably a little bit better, but um, yeah, nothing too special. You're definitely better off uh, getting a different machine gun. Like Chain of Command, even if you're a new player. Okay, next up we got... We have a new contender. We have a new contender, and that's Qua Safan 5 from Gambit. Qua Safan 5, what an interesting name. So this thing is a void high impact frame. Um, and if you look at its perks, I mean, it has a lot of perks, has a lot of perks because it's a playlist weapon, um, but it has a lot of good perks, right? So if we look at this perks, we have field prep, we have triple tap, um, which is, you know, decent, decent for the first column, not bad, right? Missing a good reload perk like auto or recon or something like that, but still let's move on. We have destabilizing rounds, which is a quite a rarity on machine guns. I believe this is, um, you know what? I don't want to spread any misinformation. So let me let me check right now. Yeah, this is the only um, machine gun with the stabilizing rounds. So that's definitely unique. Um, definitely a uh, you know a competitor for incandescent. Probably a little bit less utility, but still pretty interesting. Uh, we have target lock, right? Eh, whatever. We have frenzy, decent. Firing line, meh. Rampage, decent. Adrenaline junkie, which is nice. Cascade point, which like I mentioned is pretty nice. And then um, we have you know wellspring, eh. And then we have dragonfly. We have dragonfly. So this thing has a whole host, like pretty much half the second column is uh, decent. It's actually pretty decent, not bad, right? Uh, this thing surprised me. A lot of the recent Gambit weapons have actually been pretty decent, right? So, you know, pretty big perk pool, maybe a bit annoying to farm and not the best first column, but besides that, pretty solid. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the bottom of A tier. I think it got nine points. Yeah, I think it got nine points. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and put it in the bottom of A tier underneath Avalanche and our boy Corrective Measure. And let's, uh, let's keep trucking on. We got Culem's Terminus next. Okay. I was pretty excited for this thing when it first came out. Because, you know, it had Killing Tally. has Ensemble. And it has an Overflow kind of thing going on with Runneth Over. Um, I tried using this thing. And um, I was kind of disappointed. I mean, it's a high impact, right? It's a high impact. And uh, if we really look at this thing's perk pool, I mean, like, what does it have, right? It has Ensemble. And then it has, like, Unrelenting's okay. But would, it, would you rather take Unrelenting or Reload perk? Like, yeah, it's pretty obvious what you're going to take. Eh, nah, mm, nah, yeah, all PvP perks. No, no. Firefly on a stasis weapon is kind of interesting, um, but still, it's like, would you rather have this or like corrective measure? Like, I, I think everyone's gonna pick corrective measure. Um, it is a very precise machine gun with headstone. So if you wanted like a long range, very precise machine gun, slow firing machine gun to guarantee that you get that headstone proc, I mean, this is probably one of the best ones. Uh, but again, you know, not great. Focus Fury is essentially garbage on a machine gun. Firing line, again, precision damage only. And then you have Killing Tally, which is pretty solid, but again, high impact, no reload perk. This thing is kind of caught lacking. Not great. One of the one of many mediocre King's Fall PvE weapons. So I think we're going to put this, uh, no contest, no question. We're going to put it in the C tier, underneath Chain of Command. Okay, moving on, let's go to Recurrent Impact. Recurrent Impact is another Ritual Slash Pursuit weapon. It is a rapid fire stasis machine gun, so unlike Chain of Command, it's a rapid fire. And um, what do we have? So this thing has field prep, it has subsistence, it has firing line, it has one for all, it has headstone, so another headstone machine gun, and it has frenzy. So not bad, 
right? Not the worst thing in the world. Uh, it does have subsistence, which is kind of nice. Um, I think we went ahead and put this thing in the C tier. Yeah, I think we had to put this thing in the C tier right up next to the chain of command. Uh, this thing is kind of like the commemoration to the chain of commands, uh, you know, corrective measure, right? Uh, one of them is for, for utility, has demo ad junkie. One of them is more for general gameplay. It has like subsistence and, you know, one for all. So decent, not too bad. But again, lacking something like killing tally, lacking something like killing tally, uh, and lacking something like reconstruction or auto loading to really help this thing go along. It's also missing um, some really strong utility perks as well. Okay, uh, it's not a ritual; it's a seasonal. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my bad. You're correct. You're correct. Yeah, this is a this is a seasonal craftable weapon. Why did I think it was a ritual? It had, it had six in each column. I don't know why I thought it was a, a ritual. I got a little got a little confused there. I'm not gonna lie. Got a little confused there. All right, next up, we have Retrofit Escapade. We are, I think we're like two thirds through the list now. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at Retrofit Escapade. This thing was very famous for its fourth times a charm target lock roll, enhanced target lock, volatile rounds. People were like ripping through bosses with this thing. But, um, you know, machine guns at the end of the day, especially after that, you know, volatile rounds rework, uh, not really meant for boss damage. Um, very, very low DPS. A pretty good, you know, total damage, obviously, being a four times a charm uh, weapon with a crazy amount of bullets in it. It's obviously going to have decent total damage, but, you know, you're not going to be using a machine gun for DPS. You may have noticed that I've kind of skimmed over target lock when it comes to the other machine guns on this list, and um, this is no exception, right? So how does Retrofit Escapade fit into the standard idea of what a machine gun does? Well, let me tell you, it's not bad, right? It has field prep. It has four times a charm. It has Frenzy, Rampage, Tricorn. It has, you know, Vorpal and whatever. And it has one for all and it has target lock. So this entire second column of perks is almost all viable for PVE in some way, uh, to some extent. And uh, you have field prep in four times, which are, you know, both not bad. Uh, it's missing reconstruction. And um, I probably prefer a slightly more an adaptive. But uh, besides that, it's not, not bad at all. Not bad at all. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the B tier. In the B tier. Uh, I believe it goes, yeah, right next to right next to fixed odds, like somewhere around here, uh, I believe. Yeah, somewhere around here, uh, I believe is fine. Okay, let's keep going. We have Seventh Seraph Saw next. Now this, this is a trip down memory lane for some of you. Seventh Seraph Saw was a legendary, legendary machine gun, um, not just in rarity, but in status. A lot of people use this thing in the days of Warmind Cells, farming GMs, you know, you'd get a bunch of kills on some shanks. Uh, and you'd blow up your Warmind cell in the back of the room, everything would blow up. Uh, how, this thing, how does this thing actually stack up today though? Um, you know, given how old it is, it's not bad, right? It has field, it has auto, and then it has firing line, right? Not bad, not horrible, pretty small perk pool, um, but it is a high impact and it is missing modern damage perks, right? I mean, firing line is about as modern as it gets for this thing. Uh, you don't have anything like killing tally. Again, machine guns, a lot of the times you're going to be shooting uh, shooting uh, enemies that don't have precision you know, crit spots, right? So stuff like firing line, not going to be that useful. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. Certainly not bad. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the... Uh, I think it goes in the D tier based on the score. Yeah, it goes in the D tier. Yeah, it goes in the D tier. Um, and again, you know, like I was saying before, I, I, you know, I just call this thing not bad. Uh, machine guns, they all kind of do the same thing, right? Uh, are you going to be tossing by using a D-tier machine gun uh, in, in like your everyday content? Certainly not. But again, we're talking end game content. And uh, if you're really trying to milk it, go for the best possible. Yeah, saw is, is probably a D-tier weapon at this point. Okay, what do we have next? We have Shattered Cypher. Shattered Cypher, I think this is from Season of the Splicer. I remember first getting this thing and I really, really disliked using it. Um, it kind of just feels like... Out of every machine gun I've ever used in Destiny, this one definitely feels the most like you're just vomiting a bunch of bullets on an enemy. Uh, very inaccurate, very vomity, the gun sounds really weird. It sounds like a bunch of like digital vomit. Um, that being said, I'm going to try to rank this objectively. Uh, it has field, right? It has auto. Um, it has rampage. It has adrenaline junkie. It has surrounded, which I think it might be the only machine gun to have surrounded. Let me check. Yeah, this is the only machine gun uh, in the game, I think, that has Surrounded. So, I mean, Surrounded's not great on a machine gun, but um, it's unique. I'll give it that, right? It's unique. Um, so, yeah, Shattered Cypher, um, given the archetype, given that it has auto-loading and it has field prep, you know, two separate purpose uh, ammo perks, uh, and it has, you know, a host of decent, right, decent damage perks, uh, we're going to go ahead and put this thing in the bottom of B tier. In the bottom of B tier. We're going to put it right there. Okay, 
Next up, we have Song of Iryut. Song of Iryut, very recent addition to the current playing field of machine guns. This thing is an arc adaptive frame. And uh, boy, does this thing have a lot of pretty good perks. Has a lot of pretty good perks. So unlike Commemoration, this thing has demo in the first column. So that's already a step up, right? Has unrelenting, which is okay. It has rewind rounds, which is all right. It has reconstruction, which again, matches commemoration. Excellent job. Excellent job on that one, Bungie. Uh, it has volt shot, which, you know, I gave it a point for because it's a unique perk. But again, unlike incandescent, unlike uh, the stabilizing rounds, volt shot requires you to manually reload, which sucks, <laughs> which sucks, right? So yeah, volt shots up there. Uh, we have cascade point, which I think is pretty, pretty nice to have. Um, and then we have sword logic, which is like a pseudo killing tally, bait and switch, which is kind of like target lock on a machine gun. It's like, why? Um, and then target lock, which is, you know, we've already talked about target lock. So, I mean, I mean, as a reminder, this thing has demo, it has reconstruction, it has sword logic, and it has cascade point and it has volt shot. So this thing's pretty good, pretty solid. I mean, uh, it doesn't have a crazy amount of diverse perks, but the perks that it does have are very, very strong for machine guns. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this thing right in the S tier underneath commemoration. Definitely the best arc machine gun in the game right now. Good archetype, good perks, and it's craftable. And um, yeah, and Curse Thrall's, uh, Curse Thrall's okay as well too. So, okay, let's keep going. Uh, what do we have next? We have four machine guns next, that's what we have. And we have Terminus Horizon on the horizon. Uh, this thing is an arc high impact frame machine gun from Spire the Watcher. Um, you know, looks looks like a pretty cool gun, but does it stand up to the test of end game content? Uh, what do we have? We have triple tap. We have demo in the third column, which is excellent. Dragonfly in the third column, just like commemoration. So that's a little bit interesting. And then unfortunately, you know, bolt shot. Adrenaline junkie is nice. We have target lock. Eh. You know, we have cascade point, which is unique. And then wellspring, which is, you know, kind of whatever. So, you know, not bad. At, at its you know at bare minimum at bare minimum you have demo and ad junkie which are you know two good perks that work well together and then um you know if you want to go for something quirky you have you know volt shot you have dragon sorry you have dragonfly you have volt shot uh and you have something like cascade point as well so um and you have triple tap yeah triple tap which is not not horrible either so i'm gonna go ahead and put this thing in the a tier i'm gonna go to put this thing in the a tier uh, i think score wise this thing actually ended up landing um yeah, right up next to Corrective Measure at 11 points. Yeah, so this thing is basically, yeah, it's a, it's a demo Adrenaline Junkie machine gun with extra quirks on top if you feel that you want to use something uh, different like Demo Cascade or Dragonfly Cascade or Dragonfly Volt Shot or something like that. So yeah, it has, a, has pretty high diversity and a very solid base perk roll. Okay, uh, last three, we have the Swarm up next. Now the Swarm is an unfortunate case that we have to deal with here. I need to figure out which swarm is the one that we need to talk about. Um, does it actually say? Does it actually say? I mean, it looks like it would be this one. This one has target lock. And this one, yeah, this is the one with uh, like one for all. Yeah, this is the newer version. Okay. So the newer version of the swarm, this thing has um, a really bad first column. I mean, look at that. Wow. Wow, that's bad. I mean, you have Feeding Frenzy, which is like a manual reload perk, and that's the best perk in the column for a machine gun. Like, ugh, ugh, right? And then you have a Target Lock, which again, okay. Golden Tricorn, which is kind of nice. Uh, you have Vorpal, uh, right? You have Tap, PvP, Dragonfly, you know, decent. And then Pugilist, which, you know, you're usually not looking for in a machine gun. So yeah, Swarm, you know, despite it being a Nightfall weapon, kind of falls short in endgame PvE. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the D tier right next to Saw. Uh, I think, you know, right, slightly above Saw probably makes uh, makes sense. Saw has better reload perk. This thing has better damage perks. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Final two. Final two. Thermal Erosion from Europa. Thermal Erosion. This thing is a rapid fire solar machine gun. And um, I think the only real perks that you have on this thing are field, demo, and like dragonfly. Yeah, field, demo, dragonfly, which is... Um, yeah, field demo is like, it's okay, right? It's not bad. I mean, you have no damage perk on this thing. Uh, Dragonfly is all right. But again, you know, no no good reload perk on a machine gun really, really, really leaves it feeling uh, sluggish in terms of uptime and endgame PvE. So uh, I think we're going to go ahead and put this thing in the C tier. In the C tier, uh, probably at the bottom of C tier from my estimation. Yeah, bottom of C tier. Uh, I think that makes the most sense. And uh, yeah, we're going to leave it at that. Finally, 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 finally. This is the other argument. Uh, to have against owning a fixed odds, and that is this guy right here. Uh, are these things... Okay, these things are essentially identical. Uh, I believe, yeah, this is the newer one. 
Okay, so this is the newer one. Um, yeah, this thing is a banger. This thing is an absolute banger. Uh, it has auto, it has field, it has subsistence, which are three excellent perks that each do kind of, uh, I mean, auto and sub kind of have a similar role. Field prep is an increase in reserves. And then you have what? You have firing, meh, killing tally, great, incandescent, great, and cascade point. So this thing has, again, it's pretty much like commemoration. It has something like auto or sub and killing tally, um, but it also contains incandescent. So it can do both kind of the utility splash roll, um, the solar synergy roll, but it can also do auto, sub, and killing tally for a standard roll. And uh, I believe, yeah, it's an adaptive frame as well. So this thing is very, very solid. Uh, I think we have no choice but to put it in the S tier, which is really nice because we have one of each of the three light subclass variants of machine guns in the S tier. We have commemoration, we have unwavering duty, and of course we have uh, our newest edition, Song of Air Ute. Um, yeah, that is pretty much it for machine guns. Uh, this is a very well-rounded list, a very well-balanced list. Now, before I go, machine guns, again, like I said, somewhere halfway through this video, um, these tier rankings were made balancing across perk diversity, uh, balancing across perk selection. So, you know, the feel of the machine gun wasn't really considered. Origin traits were rather minor consideration. 3.0 synergy for the most part, outside of certain scenarios like incandescent, where it's kind of like universally applicable to be scorching things is nice. Um, again, not a minor, not a major consideration. So just, you know, take this with a little grain of salt. And of course, machine guns are machine guns at the end of the day. You can use a seven serif saw if you really want to in most content and uh, even in GMs and stuff like that. And, you know, you won't, uh, you won't feel horrible about it. Um, but again, if you go into endgame content with these three machine guns as your starting line, as your baseline, uh, you'll certainly be in a better position than if you were to use something like, uh, I don't know, Culem's Terminus or Thermal Erosion. So uh, yeah, I hope that clears things up. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and me talking about machine guns. Machine guns are rather simple creatures. Uh, again, as usual, the scoring sheet is in the description, as well as the tier list itself if you'd like to make your own version of the tier list. Uh, here is some scoring uh, for you guys that want to see it. Uh, you can of course see the scoring spreadsheet yourself, but again, let's sort by score from 13 to 3. You can see how we scored weapons using formulas, etc, etc. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for machine guns. Uh, the next tier list is going to be determined by uh, chat vote, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one, and thanks for watching.